All right, welcome back. Uh, this is the start of a new unit. Uh, this unit, we're gonna talk even more about kinematics as if you didn't get enough of that. Um, eventually, we're gonna make our way to start talking about kinematics of things moving in two dimensions, what happens when you throw a ball through the air, that sort of thing. Um, but to start off with, with this lesson here, we're just gonna think about um, the concept of relative velocity, which is something that we've been ignoring so far uh, as we've been talking about velocity. So um, if I was to ask you right now, um, if you are moving, I bet you would say no. I'm assuming you're sitting somewhere. And um, you would look around the room you're sitting in and say, well, no, I'm not moving. Um, and I would say I'm not moving, but then I'm basing that observation on my frame of reference. And I'm measuring my velocity relative to my surroundings. So something we've glossed over so far is that whenever you measure the velocity of something, we're measuring it relative to the frame of reference. Now the frame of reference is basically um, what you're gonna compare the motion of the object to. Let me give you another example. Um, suppose you're sitting in a car and it's driving down the highway at 80 kilometers an hour. If you were to just look inside the car, look at your surroundings, you would come to the conclusion that you're not moving. And relative to the frame of reference of the inside of the car, you are 100% correct. You might look at a passenger beside you and notice that they're not moving either, and you both agree that you are not moving. You could take a ball and throw it up in the air, and it would go up and come right down as though you were sitting still anywhere on the earth. But if you were to look out the window and see your friend standing on the side of the road, as the car drives by your friend, your friend would say, no, no you are definitely moving. And that's because they are in a different frame of reference. So the key here about this is that in physics, all the rules of physics have to apply within a given frame of reference, but then two people in different frames of reference might disagree about what's going on. Okay, so let's just look at a few simple examples. So we've got a man here walking on a platform. Uh, he looks like he's having a great time. For some reason, this platform is rolling to the right at one meter per second. And as he wanders along that platform, he can walk at a speed of two meters per second. How fast he's moving um, is going to be dependent on which frame of reference we choose. So if we choose the frame of reference of the platform, if we say, okay, how fast is he walking relative to the platform? Well, that would just be two meters per second. Which is to say, if he just stares at his feet, he would feel like he's moving at a regular walking speed of two meters per second. But if he stops looking at his feet, instead looks at the ground beside him, and measures his reference, um, uh, his velocity compared to the ground as a frame of reference, well now, the platform's moving at one meter per second, and he's walking at two, so his total velocity relative to the ground is three meters per second. This reminds me of one of those moving sidewalks you might find in an airport, where when you're walking along them, if you just look at your feet, you feel like you're walking at normal speed. But then if you look up beside you and compare yourself to your surroundings, you feel like you're actually moving much more quickly. So we want to find the speed within a frame of reference. We're going to consider both the object that's moving and the frame of reference. Uh, Okay, so you can throw a pie at 32 meters per second, which is a pretty impressive speed to be able to throw a, a pie. Um, and you are standing on a train that is traveling east, also at 32 meters per second. It's funny how that works out that way. Now, um, if we just draw a little picture here so we understand what's happening. We've got a train, and this train is trucking along this way. I'm just gonna call this V1 for the velocity of the train of 32 meters per second and then you are standing on top of the train throwing pies because that's what happens in physics land you're throwing a pie and the velocity of the pie I'll call v2 and that's also 32 meters per second now imagine um, for some reason your friend is standing there beside this train you decide to throw a pie at them how fast would that pie seem to approach them? Well, if you were just standing on the train and you just held the pie out and smacked your friend in the face with it, it would hit them at 32 meters per second. But on top of that, you are also throwing the pie. So one way to visualize this is to go back to our idea of vector addition, which is to say I've got the first velocity vector here of 32 meters per second, and I'm gonna to add to that the second velocity vector, the throwing velocity, to get another 32 meters per second. And you can see that relative to the ground, the total velocity is gonna be this whole thing here, V total, and that is gonna be 64 meters per second. So, relative to the U, and relative to the train, it's going 32 meters per second, but relative to the ground, it's going a whopping uh, 64. Okay, so uh, 
again, let's look at a very realistic example here of a bowling team on a train. Now this train, there's hoist trains in these problems, but this train is heading east at 15 meters per second and a stationary observer is watching the action. How exciting! Because on the train, the bowling team is just bowling the balls in various directions. Now, um, Biff lines up and he throws the bowling ball at 12 meters per second to the east. So relative to a stationary observer, what is this going to look like? Well, uh, I've got the train, so I'm going to just do V, and maybe I'll call it V train, okay, and that is 15 meters per second east. I've got my vector there. And then I'm going to add to that the velocity of um, Biff's throw, which is uh, just a really impressive 12 meters per second. Maybe we'll just call that VB for Biff, 12 meters per second. So relative to a stationary observer, uh, this bowling ball is traveling at a total of 27, 27 meters per second. Okay, good stuff. And now, uh, now we got Hank. So again, um, Hank, these all these um, bowlers are on the same train. So I'll just draw this over here. So the train vector is the same. So V train doesn't change, and that's 15 meters per second. But Hank. Wow, what a throw, Hank. He um, he whips it at 18 meters per second that way. So V Hank is 18 meters per second. Well done. And so my total here is going to be uh, 12, whoa, quick math is hard to do, 33 uh, meters per second. So this makes sense because the, um, the, the person who's watching this if they were to just watch the train go by and someone was just holding the bowling ball, it would look like it's going by at 15 meters per second. But on top of that, they're going to throw the bowling ball an extra amount. And so the bowling ball would go past them very quickly. It would look like it was going extra fast. Now, poor Ralph seems to be a little bit confused about the rules of bowling on trains because he bowls at 15 meters per second to the west. So when I try this same uh, situation where I've got the uh, velocity of the train and the train is rolling uh, 15 meters per second that way to the east. Uh, Ralph bowls back to the west. So let's think about what this is going to look like. Ralph, I'm going to add a vector here that is to the west. So this is V Ralph and this is 15 meters per second. Now, you might be screaming in your head, no, 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 it's not 15 meters per second. It can't be, and I, I guess you're kind of right. You can think about that as being negative 15 meters per second because it's to the west or in the opposite direction. So in this case, the total velocity uh, relative to the observer would be zero meters per second. Now just think about what that would look like. That means that as the train goes this way, if he bowls the ball back that way at the exact same velocity, well, relative to the observer, the ball would be rolling, but it wouldn't be getting anywhere. And that's exactly what would happen. Um, relative to Ralph, Ralph thinks the ball is moving. So do Biff and Hank. But to the outside observer, it wouldn't be moving. All right, so um, you can't have a relative, a relative velocity set of notes without uh, this kind of question. It's just too classic. Um, we've got a train A leaves Vancouver, uh, traveling at 90 kilometers an hour, uh, well, to the east, at 9 a.m. And at the same time, train B leaves Montreal, traveling west, uh, at 110 kilometers an hour. Uh, the two stations are 4,800 kilometers apart, and so at what time do they meet? So it's going to be useful to, to draw a picture of what's happening here. So the train that leaves um, Vancouver, I'm just going to call that train A. And so the velocity of train A is uh, 90 kilometers per hour going that away. And then uh, coming in the opposite direction, uh, the train from Montreal, train B, is traveling to the west. And I'll just call that its velocity VB, which is 110 kilometers per hour. So what makes this kind of tricky is that train A doesn't have to travel all 4,800 kilometers, and neither does train B, because as they both travel, they are traveling towards each other. One useful way of thinking about this is to think about it, okay, well, what would it look like if you were, say, sitting on train B? Well, you're the conductor of train B and you're just sitting there and you look around your train you think, well, I'm not moving. I'm actually stationary. But when train uh, A comes towards you, you would think that it's moving really, really fast because not only is it moving towards you, you are also moving towards it.
So what we can do is we can calculate this by using the idea of a relative velocity. V A relative to B. What this is saying is, what is the velocity of train A relative to train B? Not relative to the ground. Relative to the ground is 90 kilometers an hour east. That's easy. But if train B is the stationary frame of reference, what is the velocity of train A as it approaches it? And the way we do this is we do the velocity of A minus the velocity of B. Now, that might seem really strange, but what you have to remember, and this is really, really critical, is that these are not speeds, these are velocities. And so all of these things are vectors. So what is the velocity of train A relative to train B? Well, that is the velocity of train A, 90 kilometers an hour, minus the velocity of train B, which is negative 110, because it is headed to the west. The total relative velocity is 200 kilometers per hour, which again sort of make, should make sense. If you were a stationary observer and you watch how quickly these trains are coming together, they would be approaching each other at a total of 200 kilometers an hour. So the time they meet at becomes just a quick calculation. We know that velocity is equal to uh, distance over time, so then time is equal to displacement over velocity, and so the time is going to be the 4,800 kilometers divided by the 200 kilometers per hour, which means 24 hours. And of course it works out to exactly one day. Now, where do they meet? Um, they've both been traveling for 24 hours, so to figure out where they meet, which is somewhere in between, we could just look at one train or the other. Let's just consider train A, for example. So the velocity of train A is going to equal the displacement of A divided by the time. So what is the displacement of A? Well, the displacement of A is the velocity times the time, which is 90 kilometers an hour for 24 hours, which gives us 2,160 kilometers that it's traveled. Now, that's um, how long it takes before they're in the same spot at the same time. So this is 2,160 kilometers, and I might just specify that this is east of Vancouver. You could do the same calculation and figure out how far west of Montreal they are, and that's the exact same thing. Now, for this last example, and this is again, it, this stuff is a little bit strange. You have to really think this through. So imagine that the two trains, they finally meet, and now they're, they're headed past each other. So imagine that the conductor on train A notices that from the first second uh, that the front of train B reaches the front of train A, um, it takes 3.2 seconds for the whole train to go by. Now how long is the train? And you might again already have a sense that we're going to talk about velocities. So the velocity is equal to the displacement over the time. And the, the, the displacement of the train would be related to how long the train is because that's how far it went from when the front of the train passed a certain point to when the back of the train passed a certain point. The, the, the front of the train is that displacement ahead of the back, which is the length of the train. So how do we do this? We solve for the displacement, which is velocity times time, but the question kind of becomes, well, which velocity should we use? Should we use train A, train B, or the relative? And if you think it through, hopefully you come to the conclusion that you should use that relative velocity. Because not only is train B passing train A, but train A is also passing train B. They're going past each other at a total of 200 uh, kilometers an hour. So um, just so we get our answer in, um, in meters, we might do a quick conversion here. 200 kilometers per hour divided by 3.6 is 55.56 meters per second. And so uh, let's just finish off our calculation here, which is 55.56 times 3.2 seconds, which rounded off gives me right around 180 meters for the length of train B. All right, that is it for our first lesson um, on, uh, on kinematics in 2D.